All right. Well, good morning, and thank you for this opportunity to be with you today. I appreciate uh, very much the work that your group is about. When I was invited to uh, share with you and, and thought about envisioning the future of healthcare uh, professions and, and the workforce, I was very excited about that. I think quite often at our, our own institution, I'm very impressed with the new discoveries of medical information and knowledge that we take to our patients uh, day in and day out. And yet, on occasion, as I think about medical education or health professions education, I sometimes uh, think we have not made quite the same progress, and so I uh, applaud you for the great work that you're about to do. So why is, uh, my topic is about educational efficiencies, and why is that important? I probably don't have to sell that to this particular audience. I think you already are attuned to the fact that uh, educational efficiencies is a critical thing that we would very much appreciate the opportunity to uh, become better at. But I think we all know and recognize that educating health professionals is a very time and resource intense activity. We uh, put a lot of effort into those activities. We put a lot of uh, resources through our human resources, through our facilities, through our budgets, to produce a workforce that we think will meet the needs of the nations that we serve. We also recognize that combined curricular activities can reduce some of the duplication of effort and resources. So there is an opportunity to establish some efficiencies as we set about our work. Uh, again, as you've heard mentioned, uh, Susan talked about interprofessional education. We certainly recognize today that healthcare is very much a team sport. We very much need to continue to find the best group of providers collectively who can provide the best outcomes for our patients. And it also helps us reduce that training in isolation. Uh, for most of us, as we went through our healthcare experiences, we quite often, I think, find ourselves learning about our individual professions and doing that really in isolation until a time in which we graduate and begin our practices and then find ourselves rubbing shoulders very much with a whole other set of individuals. So the educational efficiency piece of this can also provide that important service as well. So lots of benefits that come from the interprofessional team care. Uh, we certainly value learning about from and with each other's profession. So let me tell you a little bit about the Iowa model. We're a pretty traditional academic health center. We have a large university hospital. Uh, we also have a large veterans administration hospital across the street that uh, we provide a variety of services to and benefit from interactions with. Um, and so our medical school has been in place for a, a very long time and very uh, established and has done a great job of producing great physicians. In the early, uh, or in the mid 60s, the physician assistant profession came into existence. And so for those of you who are unfamiliar with that, uh, really, in today's model, most PAs are trained um, in a model that is sim similar to the medical model. Uh, they'll un go under, uh, complete a bachelor's degree, enter into an academic program that's a graduate health program uh, that's typically anywhere from 24 to 28 months in length traditionally, and uh, graduate with a master's degree and, and practice uh, alongside their physician colleagues and healthcare teams. So from the very early years when our program was established, we had individuals on our campus who very much recognized the benefit of having PAs and physicians trained alongside each other. And they began to dabble with that idea by including PA students into some of the coursework that was created. Our medical school model had for many years been a fairly traditional model, meaning that it had two years of sort of preclinical basic sciences and introduction to the clinical experiences. And then a uh, couple of years of basic clerkship activities on top of that. Uh, as we found ways for our PAs and medical students uh, to begin being trained together, we recognized there were a lot of efficiencies that could be achieved through that. Not only did we have great outcomes in terms of them being trained together and learning from each other, but there were a variety of efficiencies that could be achieved along the way as well. So while we were bringing those folks together and their backgrounds were quite different, different their early co-curricular activities that they were doing together, we had very positive outcomes that people really valued and embraced. So over time, as the medical school curriculum changed, uh, we have gone, uh, when I started as an assistant dean in our College of Medicine, uh, back in 2009, we were undergoing an LCME visit. The accrediting agency said, you're doing great, but we'd really encourage you to take a big picture, look at your entire curriculum, see if there are things you could be doing differently to prepare the best physicians going forward into 2020 and beyond. As we began to do that, uh, we began to make some changes. We had implemented learning communities. If you're not familiar with learning communities, I'd encourage you to go out and look those up. It's a great opportunity for students to be combined together. So our medical students and PA students are put into communities together where they participate in service activities, they participate in curricular activities together, and it's been a really uh, a very positive thing. 
we had continued to add additional coursework for our PA students and medical students together so that eventually the PA students had progressed to a point where we had about 60% of their pre-clerkship curriculum being taken together. When we revised our curriculum that was implemented this last fall, uh, it was a very different medical school curriculum. We had gone away from our traditional basic science curriculum that would have a standalone biochemistry, standalone physiology, standalone pathology, and made them very integrated. Consequently, the PA program was left with a decision about can we join the medical students for that, all that preclinical curriculum, or should we separate ourselves completely from them and do all of our own curriculum? As you can imagine, since I was invited here to talk about this topic today, we elected to join them. <laughs> So when you look at our College of Medicine curriculum today, you can see those red uh, boxes around the first three semesters of the four-year medical school curriculum. Our PA students and medical students now take those combined courses. And when I say they take the combined courses, they're in the exact same course together. They uh, complete the same tests. They take all of the same activities. There's really, you know, if you're the lecturer or the course director, you would not know whether it's a PA student or a medical student unless you look at their badge or look them up in the, in the system. So uh, this provided us, we thought, some great efficiencies from the standpoint that instead of developing our own separate courses, having separate course directors, having separate classrooms, using different facilities, by combining our class, uh, classes together, we had a great opportunity for our students to learn together to actually achieve, we thought, some very important outcomes in terms of their educational experiences, but also be uh, providing ourselves with some great efficiencies in terms of the utilization of the resources necessary to accomplish that. So what are some pros and cons of the model? Certainly students uh, educated in teams we think is a very valuable thing they learn about and from each other in their professions. We think we very much are able to reduce a lot of the duplication of separate courses that each profession was previously involved in, saving some very valuable time and resources along the way. Uh, we also think that learning collaboratively uh, the practice strategies during those formative years of their profession is really important. All too often, I think, we hope that somehow magically after our students graduate from their uh, respective professional um, graduate level educations, that they'll magically have the ability to work well with each other and be efficient in their team and resource uses. It, and we feel that it's been very beneficial to have those students really learning alongside each other and with each other, from each other, from those very early years in the formative processes that uh, hopefully establish then lifelong practices that they will carry forward with them. What might be considered some of the cons to that model? Uh, we certainly know that some people had expressed, well, there'll be a loss of their professional identity. If you put PA students, medical students all together, treat them really the same, won't there be confusion over their identities? It certainly, I think, creates an opportunity for us and a need for us to be very diligent and be very uh, strategic about how we educate those groups of students. It's great to have them together. Are there other activities that we can augment those experiences with to make sure that each profession does have the appropriate role modeling, does have the appropriate um, ability to address those unique aspects of their practice that they're going to be participating in? Would students uh, perhaps want to change? In other words, as they start into this process and they're taking all the same coursework together, surely you'll have students who flood your offices as an assistant dean who want to change from one group to the other. The reality is I've experienced that for many years already. Occasionally a medical student will come to my office and say, I think maybe I didn't know about PAs and I'm wondering if I might have been a better fit there or vice versa. An occasional PA student might come into my office and say, gosh, you know, I wonder if, I, if medicine would be a, a choice that I should be considering. So we have not really seen any change in that. Uh, we've not had anybody ask to make a formal change in this year that we've been doing this. And so uh, whether or not that will change over the course of time remains to be seen, but it hasn't borne it hasn't been borne out to date. Uh, also, we had some of our faculty that you know, expressed some concern. Gosh, can you really take in PA students who may have a slightly different background and preparation and really put them together with the medical students, have them take all the same tests, expected to perform at the same level to pass? And uh, you know, a legitimate concern and certainly something we discussed and debated. But based on our previous experience, it was relatively easy for us to take this next leap and say we think they can do it together. Accreditation is an interesting uh, challenge on some level in that I think almost all of our accrediting agencies encourage us to participate in interprofessional education activities, so it meets very well with that. The flip side is you're also expected to be very purposeful in the way you create your curriculums to make sure that it meets the needs of your graduates to fulfill the uh, competencies that they're expected to possess. And so as we continue to, to create our objectives, we have a variety of individuals from both professions 
I wear a hat, obviously, in both our medical school curriculum as well as being trained as a PA and a department chair. Our medical director for the PA program is a strand director we'll mention in a moment. We have individual faculty from our PA department who are course directors. So uh, we've worked very hard to make sure that our presence is, is there in both places. So in terms of the performance issue, because everyone likes to talk with me about, well, gosh, do they really perform approximately the same? And of course, we were a little anxious about that as well. Even though we'd had a, our PA students take an occasional course with the medical students, we thought, you know, if we put them in really completely into the same curriculum all together, are they really going to be able to do this? And as you can see from our first experiences and as borne out in this next set of activities uh, in the spring semester, they do fine. Uh, they're able to keep up and, and take on the coursework. And so those efficiencies and the benefits that we get from having our students together have not created impediments for our students to continue down that pathway. A lot of people have scratched their heads about that and thought, gosh, you know, I, I wouldn't have anticipated that. And uh, my response is usually that, you know, our students are amazing people, both medical students and PA students. Whatever we tend to put for in front of them, wherever the bar is at, they're usually very capable of meeting it. So what are the lessons learned? Certainly there were some initial faculty concerns expressed about the different backgrounds, different prerequisites. Those are very, can be addressed. We don't have pre exactly identical prerequisites for our students coming in, and they, they manage to do fine. Um, the issue about students changing uh, interest in profession, again, is not borne out. We do make a, occasional slight modifications. So in other words, as part of our curriculum, when there's a small group and we think there's something about that small group that would be better for having the PA students all together in a small group instead of blended, or the medical students all together in a small group instead of blended, we'll occasionally do that. But that's the exception rather than the norm. And uh, so there are some modifications that can be made. And again, we've talked about the accrediting issue. Um, to date, we've not been, uh, had any uh, sp specific concerns expressed. But I think that is something each of us needs to be very uh, careful about to make sure that we are cognizant of what the expectations are for us in the accrediting agencies that we uh, are represented with. And I think administrative support was very critical. We've had the blessing of having deans who have been very supportive of this idea, who've encouraged us to go down this path, and have sort of set the tone for the institution from the top uh, down. And I think that's very important as we have uh, looked at ways to do this effectively. I think there are some ways to uh, apply this model to others. We have now gone into sort of this total immersion simply because we had to sort of decide whether we wanted to be all in or all out. However, for many years, we were in a hybrid version where we selected particular courses and had our students together. In other words, it doesn't have to be all or none. I think there are plenty of ways where you can uh, find your opportunities to bring students in, get them involved at the level that's appropriate or that it makes sense and provides you with the efficiencies that would be useful at your institution. Learning communities have been a great way. We, uh, we've now had the PA and medical students together for a little over 10 years. We're now starting to dabble with doing that with our pharmacy students and with some of the other blocks of students as well. And uh, if you can't find ways to get them together curricul in curricular activities, there are some efficiencies, I think, through the learning communities that can also be very beneficial for you. And then finally, just that the mechanisms that shape your interprofessional education, collaborative practices are not the same in all settings. Uh, institutions do need to utilize uh, uh, mechanisms that are going to be most appro appropriate at your institution. So take a look at your site. What are the things that make sense for you to possibly be doing together that can provide efficiencies for you in terms of the resources, but also just make sense in terms of the way your institution is structured? And with that, I will stop and uh, appreciate very much the opportunity to share our experience with you. Thank you very much. Elizabeth Baxley.